Okay, class. Well, we have a new week in our Digital Learning Tools and Resources class, and it's April 17th, and we're talking about ePortfolios this week. So an ePortfolio is a place that students can put their work online, and it's a way for you to go through that work and assess their learning um, based on what they have posted online. So the real trick with this is having students post something online. So we're kind of assuming an older audience for this one, um, an audience of students that are maybe high school, middle school, or older, so that they can uh, be able to do some of these tools like Wix or Weebly or Google Sites, that they can really get on those tools, create a website, and add their own pieces to it. So that's what we're talking about. I'm going to read chapters, chapter 22 and a, and a little bit more about... Um, some of the portfolio ideas or ex effective practices with, with portfolios. And then you're going to watch some of these presentations. Now these are going to focus on how to use Weebly, Wix, and Google Sites. And so one of these three is something you're going to have to choose between to have your students make a portfolio on. And all of them are free sites where students can go to and create their own little site. Now you actually don't have students, you don't have to have your students, if you do have students, you don't have to have them actually go and create this ePortfolio, but what you're going to do is actually have them use, create an assignment where students would use this portfolio site to make an ePortfolio. And so that's the last object or assignment for this week is the ePortfolio assignment and they are um, a new way to look at how students learn over time. So you're going to create a project for your students in which they would create their own online ePortfolio. Include clear directions about what ePortfolio site to use. So you're going to pick one, Wix, Weebly, or Google Sites. And then also indicate what pages you want to see on the ePortfolio. So what pages would you have students create? You know, And you can kind of imagine any class that you want to imagine that you're teaching about. So if it's biology, maybe you want to have them create a human and anatomy um, website or maybe a cellular reproduction one. Or if it was language arts, maybe you want to have them create poetry, a poetry page, and um, also a, um, a research information page or something like that. You know, that's, that's what you're thinking about with this e-portfolio assignment. Um, yeah, so you can just make up pages, projects, and assignments for the portfolio that your students should include if you don't have a class. Or if you do have a class, you can make it up for your class um, that you're actually teaching right now. And then also include a rubric for how you're going to grade those e-portfolios that your students would submit. It wouldn't focus on grading the actual assignments and projects that students include in the e-portfolio. So let's say they have a website on cellular reproduction. They probably are going to put some assignments and worksheets maybe up there on that site. But those assignments and worksheets aren't what you're going to grade. You're just going to grade the portfolio in general. So focus on grading just the aspects of the ePortfolio itself for this assignment. And so that's what I want to get from you is just basically um, uh, it's a document basically. you know, A document that has all these elements in it and tells students where to put the information that they could put there and uh, how to include those items in the grading. Um, I'll give you an example from my 385 class just to show you what this might look like. So let's see here. You know I have students create a professional website and, some, and many of you have taken my 385 class so you probably remember this assignment where you had to create your own website. And so this is an example where I have these different pages, like the home page, the resume page, the coursework page, and I want them to create all these pages. And then I want I tell them what they should put within each page. And then for the rubric down here, I have them include, um, you know, what items, the uh, the home page items. You know, is the home page sufficient? And adequate. Here's the points that you can receive possible from the home page. Is the resume page good? Is the teacher work sample page okay? And so forth. So it looks for the rubric. The rubric really focuses not on the actual assignments that students have already done and already been graded for, but it, it focuses on the ePortfolio itself. Like are all the assignments there that should be there? 
So that's an example of just an, an ePortfolio assignment where you have a list of the pages that you want students to include and then the assignments that you want them to include. And you could let them choose what assignments they want to include. Let's say you have a unit on poetry. Maybe they pick their best works from that unit. And uh, it's up to them what ones they include on their ePortfolio. But the overall point, of course, of an ePortfolio is just an opportunity for students to show their work in a more authentic way for assessing them. And it also provides them an opportunity to share their work to potential employers or to others outside of the school situation that you are in with them. So I think that's about it for this week. Um, if you do have questions about that, let me know. But that will be due this week, uh, the end of this week, the ePortfolio assignment.